Hi everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry where I'm going to take you through a redox titration calculation. So I'll just read through this one for you. A sample of moss killer is 25% by mass iron 2 sulfate. A 50 gram sample of the moss killer was added to 100 centimeters cubed of water and a solution was made to 250 centimeters cubed. Calculate the volume of 0.8 mole per decimeter cubed acidified potassium manganate solution that would be required to react a 25 centimeter cubed sample of this moss killer solution. You are expected to know this particular reaction, for instance. It's one of the ones as part of the new OCR specification that they expect you to know going into the exam without them giving you much information about what the reactants and products are. It's not too difficult though. You need to know that it's 5Fe2 plus reacting with MnO4 minus and 8H plus. And what they react to form is 5 moles of Fe3 plus. So the iron there has been oxidized and that's because acidified potassium manganate is an oxidizing agent. We also get some Mn2 plus. The manganese in the MnO4- was 7+, plus, and now it's 2+, plus, so that's been reduced. And we also get 4H2O. Now, the most important bit of this that we're going to be using now, these two just here, and we're going to be coming back later on to see that there is a ratio here of 5 to 1. So I'm going to come back to that. I'm going to need that information as part of this redox titration. So to begin with, what's happening? Well, I've got an... Moss killer, which is iron 2 sulfate, and I've been told it's 25% by mass um, of the actual iron 2 sulfate. So if I had 100 grams of it, then 25 grams of that 100 grams would be iron 2 sulfate. So what I need to do now is if I've got 50 grams, I need to figure out uh, what mass that actually is of iron 2 sulfate that's in there. It's really easy though. All I need to do is 0 0.25 times 50. And that's going to tell me what mass I have of the 50, which is the iron 2 sulfate I'm interested in. And that's quite easily 12.5 grams. Now, that 12.5 grams is of FeSO4. And what I need to do next is I need to find out how many moles of that there are. My long-term goal is to figure out lots of like moly volume concentration terms, so specifically concentration value. Uh, so a volume value for the MnO4 minus in the long term. And so I am aware that's going to involve ratios and moles. And so working out the moles from this mass value is going to be absolutely crucial. So what I need to do is I need to do for moles of FeSO4, this is going to be mass divided by MR. So the mass value is the 12.5. And I'm going to divide that by the MR of iron to sulfate, which is 151.9. And that's going to give me a mole value from this 12.5 gram mass of FeSO4 as part of the moss killer. It's going to give me a mole value of 0 0.0823 mole. So that's all the moles of FeSO4 that are inside the moss killer sample that I'm using and are now in my 250 centimeter cubed solution. But I'm not actually using all of those moles in the titration. I'm only actually using a 25 centimeter cubed sample of that, and since 25 centimeters cubed is a tenth of 250 centimeters cubed, then I'm only going to be using a tenth of these moles in the titration. So let's have a look at how we just need to modify that number. Now you could keep it really simple, and you could just do 0 0.0823, and you could divide that by 10. And that would tell you how many moles you have in the 25 centimeter cube solution. So I just want to remind you here, this is of the FeSO4. But bear in mind that for every one of the FeSO4 we have, we have one of the Fe2+, plus, like so. This is also the mole value for Fe2+, plus, really. It's like saying if we had 100 pens with lids on, we have 100 lids. That's all I'm really saying. If I have 0 0.0823 moles of FeSO4, I have... 0.0823 moles of Fe2+, plus. and so I'm going to refer to it as Fe2+, plus from now on. I can ditch the SO4 to minus bit from here on in. So, I've got this number of moles, and I want to figure out how many moles I now have in my 25 centimeter cube sample. I don't want to seem like I'm overcomplicating it, but I actually want you to times this by something. And what I want you to times it by is a ratio of what we're going to coming from where we are. So a to and from, like you're writing a letter to such a body from you. And so I want to times it by 25 divided by 250. 
And it's because in this particular example, it's nice and easy. 25, 250, it's clearly a tenth. I just need to divide my mole value by 10 to figure out how many moles I would have in a 25 centimeter cube sample of a 250 centimeter cube solution. It's just one tenth of a pizza. How much do I have on one slice? But sometimes these numbers are things like 26.8 from a 300. And I just want you to have a technique where if you know to times it by this to and from, then you have something that you can use in the exam. And so I just want you to be a bit more skill prepared. Now, this value is, of course, going to be 8.23 times 10 to the minus 3. I do want you to be used to standard form because you often have to give your answer in standard form in OCR exams and you'll notice that this number is to three significant figures as well which is also very important in most OCR papers. Now that's my number of moles of Fe2 plus in the 25 centimeter cubed aliquot of the total 250 solution. Aliquot just means portion of the solution so it's a measured particular volume of the solution and it's a 25 centimeter cubed sample. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use that ratio that I talked about earlier between the Fe2 plus M and the MnO4 minus to find out how many moles of MnO4 minus are being used each time. So here we go. Now the ratio, remember, just jot this back here. So within the confines of our titration, the ratio was 5 Fe2 plus to 1 lot of the MnO4 minus. So I am here at the moment with my 8.23 times 10 to the power of minus 3. And I am going across to my MnO4 minus. So I'm going to take this value and I'm going to copy the ratio and I'm going to divide by 5. And that tells me my moles of MnO4 minus which are being used per titration are 1.65 times 10 to the minus 3. There we go, there we go. Now, since I've now got the moles of MnO4 minus, really simple, what I can do next is I can turn this into the volume we are after. So we're after a volume, and the volume cal uh, cal calculation is something that you've used a lot all the way since you first started your AS level, going into the A level. And so really the only complication that's been brought into this is the fact that it is a redox titration, and the fact that it's not an acid and alkali that we're looking at, we're just looking at an acidified manganate solution and some Fe2+, and it changes colour by itself, it doesn't need an indicator, so there's no complications there. So let's do this final step. Okay, so final step right now to figure out the volume of the MnO4- minus that I need. I'm going to do the moles that I've just calculated, 1.65 times 10 to the power of minus 3, and I am going to divide by the concentration, and I've been given the concentration by the question 0 0.08. You'll notice I've not mixed up any numbers in this, I've been really clear about it. Don't try and use a concentration for one thing for another species, so I didn't try and use that concentration for the iron 2, I didn't use that volume of 100 anywhere incorrectly. You've just got to be really clear with this with what's going on. Now, if you actually calculate this value, you might have a little freak out, because in the exam you're obviously under lots of pressure, and if you calculated this value right now, you would get an answer of 0 0.0206 and you might have a little freak out in the exam thinking that's a tiny number, how would I ever get that out of a burette? I know I can't record that kind of a value, I can only record to 0 0.05 when I'm doing a titration anyway, so what's happened? Well, calm down a bit because remember, decimeters cubed. So what we need to do now is, it's not been asked for us by the question, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to turn that into a centimetre cubed value to calm some of you down. And so that is going to be 20.6 centimetres cubed. Doesn't that seem a lot nicer? All I did was times that by a thousand. You must get so used to dividing the volume by a thousand that you forget sometimes that if you are calculating a volume to get it into centimetres cubed, you are going to have to times it by a thousand whilst you're doing a calculation. So it's divide by a thousand to normally use volume in a calculation, and this time when we're getting it out as an answer, which is quite rare, you can see here we've had to times by a thousand. Now, I hope that clears up um, how to generally structure a redox titration, and I hope if you have any other questions, you can bring them to lesson and I can go through specific examples with you. Good luck in all your exams. I'll leave you to the rest of a playlist. Happy revising.